as well. So this is uh, Dean Tagashi at GameSpeed. I'm here with uh, Daniel Suarez from Activision. How you doing? Good, Dean. How are you? Good. So you guys are talking about Black Ops 2 here. Uh, it must be good to be able to, to chat about it now. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. We've been working on it for a long time, so it's good to actually... You know, we did our reveal a couple of weeks ago. The trailer yeah. came out. People were really excited, and now we're kind of turned the game off to mm -hmm. a bunch of different people. So the trailer set up all kinds of debates, I guess, in the community, right? Uh, it's, uh, I forget what it was. It was like seven in favor, three against on the on the trailer votes, I guess, on YouTube or something like that. So there's sort of no in between there, right? There's, well, see, there's some diehard fans who love anything you guys do, and then there's some people who look at that and go, "That's." That's an outrage or whatever. Anyway, so what was your reaction to all of this reaction? Well, first and foremost, I think, you know, every year I think we're blown away by the way the fans react to things. And I think if you look at the number of YouTube views mm -hmm. that we had in just two weeks, the number's astounding and it has been awesome for us. Mm -hmm. And I think what that does is the team at Treyarch just gets even more motivated. And, you know, we look at all the feedback, we look at everybody, what everybody's saying. I think, like you said, a large majority of people are like excited. We're taking Call of Duty in a new direction. Mm -hmm. We're adding some new gameplay and innovation to what's going on. Uh -huh. um, I think we've showed off one future. We've talked about sort of the branching storyline stuff. We've shown these Strike Force missions. We've hinted at zombies. We've hinted at what we're doing in multiplayer. Uh -huh. And I think all those things sort of, sort of, as Mark talks about, sort of fulfill that concept of the complete package. So, uh -huh. so I think people hearing about that, you know, it's exciting. And we're excited the way people are reacting mm -hmm. to it. And the uh, the drones and the robots, I guess uh, you know, it's very different uh, kind of uh, combat than uh, the traditional visceral infantry soldier hand to hand sure. fighting a Call of Duty. Sure. How how do you say convince the fans that sure. that this is the right way to go? Well, the first the first thing I'll say to convince them is that that sort of old sort of type of gameplay hasn't gone away. So if you think of the way we're telling the story for Call of Duty Black Ops 2, it's a two sort of time period game. We've got the past, which is based in the sort of first Cold War, or sort of the la latter half of that first Cold War, where we're going to Central America and sort of the key hot zones in the Middle East and all the different things that took place there, and engaging really way the sort of Black Ops soldiers did in Black Ops 1 mm -hmm. with some different types of gameplay. I think we've shown sort of some horseback riding. The people are all sort of like, oh, what's going on there? Um, and then really sort of going to the future, where, like, again, taking examples where the player will actually have the ability to control the drones, not just fight them, but they'll also be sort of enemy infantry that they'll be taking uh, sort of arms against as well, too. Uh, yeah, it, it, it is a, a large number of contrasts in the game, I guess. And maybe that's one of the points, I guess. Well, I think, I think contrast really allows us innovation in terms of gameplay. And I think what we want to do is, you know, create this sort of juxtaposition of sort of that old style of, you know, if you're fighting in Afghanistan against the Mujahideen or something like that versus what does that mean fighting, you know, against drones in Los Angeles. There's these sort of complete different ways of, of creating that sort of gameplay. Mm -hmm. And I think with the game and the campaign itself, we're, all, we're constantly trying to find innovative ways to sort of change what the player thinks is going to happen next. And I think that's where the Strike Force missions sort of play this interesting sort of uh, introduction to where people expect their linear gameplay to be with Call of Duty. So these Strike Force missions which we showed off today are these sort of sandbox levels where the player really can play it any which way they want. You know, they can play it in a sort of RTS Overwatch mode where they're controlling and moving units. They also can then uh, basically be any of those particular units themselves and play the entire thing in a first person point of view. Mm -hmm. They can control different drones such as the quad rotors or the claws or the autonomous uh, ground drones and move around the level and mm -hmm. just play that way. So it really sort of changes up the way the gameplay is, is done and will also then change the way the narrative structure plays out because those are win or lose scenarios. Okay. So depending on if you win, something will happen differently in the campaign versus if you lost that, that, yeah. that mission. It was interesting to me was that the, the way I thought, and I, I imagine a lot of gamers thought this was going to go, was that maybe you'd start in the 60s, you'd go on to the 70s, you know, by Black Ops 5 you get to the 80s or something like that. Um, was there something unappealing about this this particular kind of evolution? And, and then maybe you would intersect at some point with modern uh, warfare, right, uh, in, in some future. But uh, but here it's, you're jumping right to 2025. Sure. Um, well, two things. One, the stories are, are in different sort of worlds. I think we've talked about this before, where the modern warfare world is different than the Black Ops world. Mm -hmm. And what happens in that sort of game world is different than in ours. So they never really will sort of intersect in terms of characters and people that are in those events. Yeah. But I think for us, you know, 
the Cold War was really fertile ground, and I think what you'll see in our campaign is we're leveraging a lot of the cool things that occurred in the 70s and 80s, and that's where sort of Oliver North came in as a consultant for us. He was there, and he was, you know, talking to world leaders, engaging with sort of what black ops operatives did then. And, you know, I don't think there's a better sort of consultant we could have picked for black ops for that time period than Oliver North. And as he came in, you know, he came into the studio, presented to the team, talked to us for like four or five hours about different things that were going on within the world, and that really sort of took the team and allowed them to kind of run off and create that sort of awesome fiction that's going to happen within that time period. And then for the future, we also brought in another consultant, which is Peter Singer, and he sort of opened our eyes to all the things that were going on, not only just today, but also in the world of tomorrow. And what is, what's that sort of geopolitical landscape in 2025? What's going on in terms of technology in 2025? And this sort of concept of there was some sort of parallelism between what was going on in the world in the 70s and 80s with the uprising, well, at least what was going on in the Middle East and Central America, and then that parallel of what's going on in the world today in those areas. And it really allowed us to sort of say, wow, there's this sort of cool juxtaposition of those two areas being critical sort of hot points within the world, mm -hmm. and let's let's kind of play that story that way. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I, I would guess that, uh, say, even in a world of, of drones and robots, that at some point um, the, the combat between one man to another man, I guess, uh, is what the heart of uh, Black Ops and Call of Duty would be about. I guess. Sure. Well, I think for us, that's you know that's who our main villain is. The main villain is not a robot. The main villain is not a drone. The main villain is a human. And David Goyer, who we actually brought on at the end of Black Ops One, came back, and he's the writer of The Dark Knight. And he and Dave Anthony, who's the story creator and Treyarch, the director of the game, really worked together from day one to say, how do we create sort of this unique fiction, this new unique way of telling a sort of Call of Duty story, and also at the same time creating this sort of unique and different villain that we've never really seen before in Call of Duty. So that sort of Cold War area in the past is going to allow us sort of create and sort of identify how that monster is created. What, how, what caused, what events within that sort of scenario caused this guy to come to power and sort of create the sort of hatred for the enemy. And then as in the future, that sort of storyline plays out through the entire game, and then in the future he comes to power and shows what he's capable of doing. So. Oh, very good. Thank you very much. Cool. Awesome, Dean. Thanks. Uh, oh, there you go. <laughs>